whitetails, your guide to North America's number one big game animal. Today's topic is antler lingo, or more specifically, the language of antlers. And it goes something like this. Hey Brian, I shot a great buck last weekend. It's a four and a half year old, 130 inch mainframe 10 with split G2s, a kicker off the three, great purling at the base. Man, his H1 measurements were over seven inches. This buck had character. To the untrained ear, that may sound like a lot of jargon. But to the hardcore whitetail enthusiast, this is a very specific descriptive language. Well, what are the origins of this language? Actually, two sources. One is the Boone and Crockett scoring system, and the other is just general terminology that hunters have used over the years and become accustomed to. So let's talk about the Boone and Crockett scoring system jargon. Well, perhaps the most common are the use of the term or the letters G and H to describe certain measurements on a deer's antlers. G1 is the brow tine, G2 is the second tine, G3 the third, and so on. A lot of hunters may wonder why we use the letter G to represent a tine and not say the letter T. Well, it's actually quite simple. Letter G is the column on the Boone and Crockett score sheet where we measure antler tines. The same is true for the letter H. That's where we measure antler circumferences. And when you're taking a Boone and Crockett score, you'll take four different circumference measurements. One, two, three, and four. So this gives you an idea of the deer's mass. When it comes to other terminology commonly used, we talk about a deer's mainframe. That's its typical mainframe. In other words, where the typical points originate from the beam. In this case, even though this buck has a number of abnormal points, its typical frame is as a 10 point. One, two, three, four, five, then obviously five for the other side, giving it a typical 10 point frame. We talk about things such as fork tines and drop tines. Fork is simply where you have a, a fork in a tine that's an abnormal fork. A drop tine would obviously be a downward facing tine, particularly off the main beam. We talk about things like kickers and stickers. These are commonly used to represent tines that are somewhere up on the beam and in an abnormal location. We have a number of terms that we use for things around the deer's base. The term purling represents the knobby growth along the base. Uh, the term burr point comes off the burr, or the base of the deer's antler, or the term basal snag. Again, all terminology used to describe things along certain locations, in this case, the base of the deer's antler. So there you have it, folks. You now know a new language. So the next time you overhear a conversation filled with antler lingo, you won't need an interpreter. That's it for today's episode of Murphy's Law. I hope you learned something. Until next time, be sure to leave your questions and your comments here in the video, but also to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to check out all the great content at HuntStand.com.